Hey, what up? It's your boy, Joey, and hey. I'm here with the homie Nana. The homie Nana, the rock on Nana. The rock on Nana. Why, why are we doing a video together? I have no idea. Because, <laughs> you know, I feel you were on Trash Taste, right? Yes. But I figure we haven't, like, talked about the one thing that you're more known about. I was able to appear on your Trash Taste episode before, yeah. and we had a lot of fun there. But yeah. I think that I wanted to talk more, like, deeply about, like, music with you. Like, there it is. That's the word. I'll there we go. I got it. We're going to talk about music. Woohoo! Nana, if you guys don't know, is a professional singer here in Japan. She's probably done a couple of your favorite anime openings. I know she's done Hopefully. one of mine. I figured uh, we would talk about our favorite anime songs. Okay. Or anime openings, anime endings, insert yeah. songs, what, whatever you want. And then yeah. just kind of geek out about music because that's what we do. So what's your favorite anime song? <laughs> Right off the bat? Right off the bat. I don't know how to like ease it <laughs> okay. at all. Let, let me rephrase that then. Mm. What's your favorite anime song recently? Recently? I've been doing like cover songs of mm. my own and recently I fell in love with Zankyo Sanka. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. by Emma yeah. from um, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yeah. So that one was like an eye opener for me. I haven't heard that kind of like sort of Japanese taste but rock and roll song. I feel that's the one thing I appreciate about rock in Japan is mm -hmm. that I feel in this day and age, like Japanese rock is still very much the mainstream. Yeah. Like, whereas like overseas and like, especially in the West, like mm -hmm. I feel kind of R&B and like hip hop mm. has like kind of taken over the pop sphere. Yeah. Which sucks, right? Because it's like, there's mm -hmm. so many good rock bands mm -hmm. in the West, mm -hmm. but now they're all just kind of like underground mm, or they're true. like infused with pop a little too much. But I feel Japan still does like that straight, straight rock, cut right? rock songs. Exactly. But it's like the top of the chart. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of anime songs or whatever, but my most recent- Yeah, I want to know that. One, it's not really like a rock cut, but like the opening to, um, oh, My Dress Up Darling. Mm. The opening to that was cute. Yeah, that was. Yeah, not quite rock, but like it- That was catchy. I, I, yeah, I think like, I don't really care about the genre of the song, mm -hmm. as long as the song fits the theme of the actual show. But like when it's just like a straight up pop cut that fits in with the poppy like and lighthearted like theme mm -hmm. of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really complain about that. Yeah. The one that like floored me mm -hmm. as of recent times was uh do you know the anime Kids Naiva? Yes. Yeah, the opening to that by Boom Boom Satellites. Oh that lay your one. lay your hands on me. Yeah. That opening is nutty. Oh my god. That song I I've remember forgotten about that one. The first time I heard that song I was like whoa what is this? Yeah. Like what how have I never heard of these guys? Yeah. Even though the show was like so mediocre. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of series though that like you don't get too hooked on the anime itself, but mm. the song, yeah, the opening, the ending songs are just completely like godlike. Yeah, I feel though that's that. like, isn't that like such a waste? <laughs> it is. It it's is. like God. I wish the I wish the actual show was as enjoyable as the opening. Yeah, it is. One of your songs is very much like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder which one that is. The uh, the opening to Arpeggio Blue Steel. Oh. Like, that sh that opening is banger, but the anime- I don't remember a whole lot about the anime itself. Yeah, I get that a lot. Like, I go overseas, mm. and you know, a lot of people know my songs, but not necessarily the anime, or vice versa. Mm. They knew- Because, you know, some people, you know, don't appreciate the opening and endings as much. They, they want to look at the anime, right. and that's completely understandable. That's what so. I've- Actually, that's what I've wanted to ask you mm -hmm. as someone who sings for anime openings. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about people who skip anime openings? Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Right? Don't, don't hit, just because it's, you know, like- So like how I originally found you was through the Batum opening. Like I actually haven't heard this, how you came across my music. Oh, it's because it was during the period where like every new season of anime, I would literally watch everything. I was lucky to be in that like stage in your life where you were watching everything. Well, to be fair, I had heard of Batum, like mm -hmm. the manga, because mm -hmm. I'd read the manga before. Mm -hmm. So I was like kind of looking forward to watching the anime mm -hmm. for it, because I thought the manga was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So then when I heard that opening, I was like, damn, this like nano chicken fucking singing rock or R sound. And because it's like, it's so rare uh -huh. to find anime openings that are like that hard hitting. Yeah. You know, because like a lot of anime opt usually, in, at least from how I see it, they kind of opt to more like the cutesy poppy mm -hmm. kind of tracks, right? So I feel it's quite a nice surprise when an anime decides, you know what, let's just like, 
get out our guitars, just fucking put the distortion up to an 11 and just like go as hard as possible. Like Death Note opening 2, but like oh, right, maximum right, right. the whole bonus. Oh like, my gosh, that brings back so many memories. I, I would have listed like in my one of my favorite anime songs, yeah. like Death Note and yeah. like those kinds of- Right? That was, I think that was the first. Oh, but like the one that floored me uh -huh. was, I think it's, I think it's the first Detective Conan opening. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The one I am a huge Detective Conan yeah, maniac. Yeah, that's uh, um, the one, it's not Blue Hearts, it's the other band that called Moto Hirotonzi. Wait, 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 wait. You need to look it up. But like, I remember how the song goes. It's not like, magic one. Oh my god! Da, 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 se -e yeah, that song. Is it the high lows? Oh, it is! Yeah, I think, so. I think it's the high lows. High lows? Yeah. Would it be too far to say he's the guy that like popularized punk in Japan? Yeah. He's kind of like the, the Johnny Rotten of Japan, yeah. essentially. But he was in this band called The Blue Hearts, which was a massive band back in the 80s, uh -huh. which like started an entire like generation of like yeah. punk heads in Japan. But it's like, that's what I appreciate though about like a lot of anime openings mm -hmm. is that they don't always like just conform to like mm -hmm. the most popular songs, mm -hmm. right? Like sometimes they like to like play around a little mm -hmm. bit. Let's go like hip hop or like, yeah. let's go some inexplicable genre of music that you'll never hear anywhere else. I think when I released No Pain No Game and like Save Your Song, mm -hmm. it was still not as mainstream as it is now to do mm -hmm. rock songs. So right. like me and my team and all my like staff members were like a little bit uh, uneasy about whether, you know, I would be able to fit in with oh, really? the sort of anime genre. Right. Yeah. So I took a chance yeah. at that time. It was still rare. Mm. And so like, I was really happy that the response was so good with No Pain, No Game. Yeah. And I'm the same with you. Like if I find a series that has like a rock and roll opening, mm. like I will immediately like latch onto it. <laughs> right. Like it's my buoy. Like I'm like, oh, yeah, rock yeah, yeah. and roll. Actually, probably the most recent anime opening mm. now that I just remembered was like the latest Attack on Titan opening that Sim uh, did. Ah, yeah. I think that surprised a lot of people. Yeah. Because it's like, you don't really hear Sims music in an anime yeah. all that much to begin with. Yeah. Like that's a band that you'd only know if you're like into j mm -hmm. But it's also so different from all the other Attack on Titan mm -hmm. openings where like, I feel most people listen to that and was like, what the hell is this? I think Attack on Titan definitely took a huge like risk when yeah, they used Sim. Definitely. How do you go about getting one of your songs to become an anime opening? Like if you're an artist that is connected in a label, like a label that has a huge anime base where they make their own animes, mm. then it's usually easier to get types because it's within the company. Right. So do they like call you up and they're like, hey, we're making this anime, we want this kind of song. Is there an artist that's willing to make a song for it? I think they're always looking for artists. And then if there's an artist that always like appeals and like they're like, oh, I'm looking for it. It's, it's kind of like a give and take, I think. Oh, okay, so okay. yeah. So is there like, ever a time where like an artist is like, hey, we just released this new song. Could you use it in, in an upcoming anime or something? I actually think that it's more the rare right. examples because it takes a lot of money mm. to be able to have your music used. So right. in the beginning, sometimes you are completely in the red zone where you don't get as much money as you're putting out mm. in order to get the tie-up. Right. So you have to have a certain amount of like risk taking. It is so difficult to get tie-ups. Honestly. Oh yeah, I bet. So the people, the artists that actually have tie-ups, mm. they are really, really lucky. And for in my case, it makes it even more difficult because I'm in the rock genre. Rock does not fit with every single anime. It's True. very like, the genre of rock is very, very yeah. narrow. The thing is, what I what I feel like is that people's opinions differ when they're more anime fans or more music fans right. that go in. And when you're a music lover, you tend to kind of like the ones that are more risky or different. That's or like, true. And then the people that go into it from the anime side, you just want really basic, really catchy, and yeah. something that really goes well with the anime, right? Right. But at the same time, there's also those like J-rock bands I listen to mm -hmm. where I'm just like, how have you not been in an anime yet? Mm. Like band made? Oh, right. Yeah. I'm like, how have you not been in an anime yet? That just, that's like, that at, in this day and age, mm. like a sound like band made mm. is just like made for anime. Mm. Agreed. Come if on, I'm... anime producers. Yeah, I know. Get on it. <laughs> After a while, again, like when you, the more and more anime you watch, the more you just kind of want something different. Yeah. And I feel the same works the same with music, right? It's mm -hmm. like after you've listened to like a thousand different bands, yeah. the one that sticks with you is the one that made you go, whoa, what the hell is that? Yeah. Right? 
Oh, have you ever watched the 90s Berserk anime? No, I haven't. They made an OVA mm -hmm. of Berserk and they used this opening called Tell Me Why by the Pen Pals, mm -hmm. which was this like rock band from like the 90s. Mm -hmm. And it is, <laughs> you gotta listen to this song. Okay. I've never heard of an uglier guitar riff. Oh my God. In my life. I'll, I'll just play it. <laughs> Like, it's so shit. That stuck with me way more than like a whole other bunch of riffs. That just because true. it was just like, they had to have done that on purpose. Yeah. Right? But even with my own tie-ups, for example, mm. I completely agree with you because there are some animes that want to take that risk yeah. and say, you know, give me all you got. Mm. And then so when we create the song, they let me like create with freedom, mm. like the lyrics and the melody and the stuff that's inside the song. But yeah. then I have experienced um, tie-ups where they have a completely like strict regulation on what they want in the songs right. and they try to sort of scrape away your uniqueness mm. and they have like oh they want this keyword in there they want this sound in there but they don't want this in there right, right. and so to be honest though i understand from both sides but yeah. the one i feel most comfortable and passionate about are the ones that you know, are more risk takers. Right, well you get like more creative freedom. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so. I mean that totally makes, you know, that's like the equivalent of like if a company came up to me and was like, hey, can you make a video for us? Mm -hmm. But we have to tell you exactly how to make that video. There are a lot of ones that are um, really calculated and mm. created just for the anime and like, oh, yeah. you know, so yeah. it's very rare to find really, really good songs right. that I can tell that the artist created it because they felt passionate about it. Right. And that passion comes through the singing and the song. Right. Um, so like, say for example, like, like for like No Pain No Game, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Like, did that song exist before you got the offer to turn that into an opening? Or did you make that specifically for the opening? That was created specifically for the anime. But that one was a rare case where we had a competition style of song creating where we got the oh, tie up okay. and then we had a couple of creators create like demo songs for us. And oh. then we sat down in the conference rooms, listened to each of them. And for me, no Pain, No Game, the demo that came mm. was instantly right. like, oh my gosh, I have to sing this. Yeah. This is the one. Like, right, I felt right. like I fell in love at first sight, right? Right, right. What about like anime endings? Anime endings. Have I, you done an ending yet? Yes, I have. I've, I've done a few endings. Um, really? Which one? Um, okay, you might not know the song, but yeah. it's called uh, Dreamcatcher. My song, it's a little bit low down, low key, but um, it's a song called Dreamcatcher and it was for Maho Shoujo. Um, so, yeah. Maho No, 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 no. Oh, series, oh a different one. Yeah. But I think I've done a few. Like, okay. it's not coming up. In <laughs> what do you mean, think? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, it happens. I forget my song sometimes. Oh, that's fair you, you guys can go Google it. Yeah, yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. Wikipedia yeah. knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, like, cause that, but that's like a completely different creation process, right? Because yeah, usually the endings are a lot, as you said, like they're a lot more like low key. Yeah. And, like, but right. I have very few ballad songs. Mm. So, yeah, usually my songs end up becoming opening song fitting more. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So that what about sense. like older songs though? Like we've talked about 2022 songs. Okay. What is one of your like go to songs or like oh this one just sticks with me even go to. Now. For me, the golden age of anime was the mid 2000s. Mm, I agree. Right, like you know, around like the Suzumi Haruki period, mm. like that's when like we had so many good shows mm. with so many good openings. Mm. Like even like the Haruki openings mm. are like amazing. God knows is so good. Like, like the, the guitar, oh. the solo, the da, 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 da. like that everyone riff knows is that crazy. One. Like Who I remember, came up with that. I remember I tried to learn that when yeah. I was like in middle school, like, and I was everyone like, everyone tried to learn. Everyone that tried guitar. to learn that song. I think like the the anime that really shifted mm -hmm. my perception of like kind of making the theme of the show fit the music mm -hmm. was Kaon. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah. Because like it's like you have a show about cute girls. Uh -huh in band right uh -huh. but like you look at the art style and you like listen to the voice actors and you feel like the overall like very bubbly mm -hmm. atmosphere mm -hmm. and then you get amazing songs like uh don't say lazy no what i really appreciated about it is it was a band based anime like story mm. but they actually put heart and soul into the song yeah and all the songs were great were amazing i know like i still listen to the k -On soundtrack yeah. to this day because every song is amazing yeah. i even sung hare hare yukai oh really yeah 
I want to hear that. No, it's 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 for no one's ears. It's locked away safe where no one can hear it. But I, I, I want to hear your version of Hari Hari Yukai. Yeah. But like just like rocked out. Maybe I'm just looking at that period through like rose tinted glasses, but mm -hmm. anime openings today don't match up mm. to what they were in the mid 2000s. Mm. I don't know why. Maybe mm. I'm just biased about that. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know what it is though. It's, it's, it's definitely something has changed in the recent years, but I can't put my finger on it all the time. I don't know. Maybe it's because like, because it's become more commercialized mm. that maybe there's like less risk taking now. Like you don't really, other than the latest Attack on Time opening, you don't really hear an opening that's like oh that's unexpected. and also you know what i think mm. sorry to cut in yeah but what i it goes back to what we talked about earlier and nowadays since everything is not on tv and people watch anime mm. online and you're able to skip the opening and endings yeah i think people are thinking less about really putting as much power into the opening and endings because in the end, mm. I mean, what percentage of the mm. viewers are actually going to watch the opening and endings each mm. and every time, mm. right? I feel a lot of people are kind of like sleeping on the overall like J-Rock exactly. and J-Metal scene and just think that J-Rock, J-Metal equals anime music. I always tell my audience that if you find an artist or a band or whatever it is that sang an anime opening or an ending that you love, mm -hmm. then the best thing you can do for that artist is go and listen to the rest of their discovery. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what I said before <laughs> on my own podcast. I'm like, if you find an artist that you like through anime, yeah. go and listen to their album. I mean, there are lucky artists like Lisa, for example, mm. whose most every single song she releases it is an, an anime, anime song. Opening, but it's yeah. not like most recent artists are, uh. aren't like that. Right. There's entire albums that bands like Asian Blue Food Generation make mm -hmm. that when none of the songs were in anime. Mm -hmm. Where I would argue that material sometimes is even better. Like yeah. Nintos de Sigure in particular, mm -hmm. I feel is like a really bad, mm -hmm. like, you know, victim yeah. of that. When Abnormal Eyes came out, right, from uh, Psychopaths, mm -hmm. that was like their sixth studio album. And most people who listen to that song probably never went back and listened to six albums worth oh, of wow, other material yeah. when all of it is amazing. And the problem is it's a merit for the sell sales, mm. but it's I think a demerit for the artist that Japanese music industry releases yeah. so many singles. Yeah. That's the problem because I agree. people who like the song only buy the singles mm. and then they're not interested in the albums. Yeah. To but, be fair though, mm -hmm. I feel even in the West nowadays, mm -hmm. it's mostly becoming like a singles based market. Yeah. Just That's because of like streaming platforms mm -hmm. like, you know, Spotify for example, that just like, you know, back when like you listen to like records or like mm -hmm. CDs, right? Mm -hmm. You can only listen to one album at a time mm -hmm. before having to replace the physical thing. Mm -hmm. But now that everything is online, you can easily skip from one song to another exactly. through different albums, mm -hmm. right? So now it's not really become a culture of just sitting down and listening to an album cycle. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of bands and artists, I feel, are just kind of trying to pump out as many singles as they possibly mm -hmm. can to like keep the attention. There was a time in the generation where long songs were very popular. Like yeah. a lot of artists, the average song time grew to like five or six minutes mm. in the song. But now since everything is like online based and um, especially because of TikTok, mm. like they only use the first like 10 seconds or 15 seconds of a, of a song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the, the song creation itself is completely different now. Mm. People are starting to make shorter songs because no one ever listens to the full song anyway. Right. And the, only the first 10 seconds are really what everyone cares about. So they make it, there's no intros anymore lately. You know, I'm, I'm not against a good two minute song mm -hmm. right like if it's short and it's to the point and mm -hmm. it's like good during that time then sure mm -hmm. that's totally fine but i also like listening to echoes by pink floyd which is a 25 minute song you know <laughs> yeah. it's like i want i want more of that where it's like an album's worth of material mm -hmm. into one song going back to anime songs though mm -hmm. like one uh like soundtrack mm -hmm. to me that i still Ooh, think is wanna, one of one. the best soundtracks in all of anime in my opinion okay. is do you know the anime fully cool of course. Yeah. Is that soundtrack not oh, the best? Oh yeah, that one really stuck. Like that made me a fan of the pillows. Yeah. And then like so much. I think so that goes for a lot of people though. Oh right? yeah, of course. And like you know, from there I was like, what is this band? Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I'm like, oh my god, they have like 20 albums. Mm -hmm. So then I went and listened to all of them, and then I saw them like five, five, six years ago mm -hmm. live, and it was the most amazing concert. <laughs>
there are there are bands who try and replicate that sound yeah. that can't uh. do it. When they brought the pillows back for like the fully cooly like remakes, mm -hmm. it was like it was good. It was still pillows. Mm -hmm. It was still fully cooly, but it didn't have I don't know what the first is. Maybe it's like very two thousands. I think so. Yeah. I think so. That's one of the genres that I think is very 2000. Yeah. And for me, it's not a soundtrack, but mm. what I wanted to mention was that, like, this is something that not a lot of foreign anime fans get their hands on because mm. um, it's kind of hard to get the content across. Mm -hmm. It's anime movie songs that I really think are right. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I also mentioned this somewhere else, but the difference between anime movie sound sound uh, theme songs mm. and um, anime TV theme songs is the amount of time and money you're able to put into the song and the mm. creation of it. Mm. With anime TV openings and endings, you're not able to put that much time and effort into the creation. Right. It's very rushed. Right. But with movie songs, you have a lot more money and you have a lot more time and you have a lot more freedom. Mm. So I think that like the movie song is just insanely mm. good. I think when it comes to movies like Red Wings, it's like uh -huh. the exactly. number one exactly. right there, right. you know? And I mean like this stuff's great, but at the same time, it's like most people who listen to like Your Name or, uh -huh. or uh, you know, Tenki no Ko, mm -hmm. never went and listened to their first album. Yeah, exactly. Which is completely different. I know. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm an older Red Wimps fan. Same. And so it's completely, the style yeah. is completely different. Like, I remember I showed one of my friends who had only ever heard of the Kimi no Nawa opening. Oh, really? And I showed them, like, Oshaka-sama. Oh, that's my favorite that's song. That's my favorite oh song, my too. God, you know. <laughs> like, I showed them Oshaka-sama and they were like, who is this? And I'm like, it's Red Wimps. And they're like, no, it's not. But it just sucks now that because the style has completely changed, mm -hmm. it's harder for newer fans to mm -hmm. get into the older stuff again. Mm -hmm. Because it's just so different. Yeah. And it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, old Radwimp stuff is weird as hell. Yeah. Right? Like, Oshaka Saba is a really weird song. No, it's a weird song, but it's it's just addicting. It's so hard. Oh, my, I swear <laughs> that the people that have not heard of that song, like, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are newer fans. Yeah. And just go. Please go, listen to it. Go listen, go click now, and you're going to be looping that like a million Oh, right it's now. such a hard song. Like yeah. that first album goes so hard. You know what I would be really interested in trying out? What? We like sat here for 45 minutes and just ran it on about our favorite songs. Yeah. So I would say we, if we're gonna say just Erasoni, like so many things about music, why not me and you make that challenge and create our own best anime song. You say that as if it's like, oh yes, let's go get a new bottle of shampoo from the company. Like, right. like it's something you can easily do. Like, no, but like, I, I just, like something clicked in my mind right now. Yeah. Like what our like ideal anime song would be. Right. And if we sat down together and tried to create, maybe it's gonna be- I feel, rubbish. I feel knowing the conversation we just had, uh -huh. it's gonna end up being a really weird song. Cause yeah, we no like the weirdest listen, stuff. Yeah, no one's gonna listen to it, right? <laughs> I mean, look. I'm, not, I'm saying I'm down. Yeah, I'm down do for it, it but it, it might be rubbish. I'm down to do it. I don't care if it's rubbish though. Really? Yeah, because it's the closest thing I'll ever get to having a song be an anime movie. <laughs> sure. Okay. And see what like make it a thing. challenge? Yeah. To see if we can make an anime movie? Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting? We might come up with rubbish, but we might come up with something really, really good. I'm down for that. Okay, you have to promise me we're going to do this. Yeah, if you're we're down. We're going to do this. If okay. you're down. Yeah. yeah. I hope this challenge. doesn't become poorly aged things. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I guess look forward to that eventually to that. on the main channel, maybe perhaps. Hopefully. That's it for this video. Hey, go check out Nano's stuff. Links in the description below. By the way, we worked on something pretty cool together. It, it might, might be. be already out. If it is, then I guess you already know about it. If not, look forward to it. But hey, in the meantime, like the video, subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel. In so the see meantime, you guys soon. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. Rock on. Bye.